drums. Welcome, fellow drum nerds and music producers. It's Jonathan from Red Pack Drums. On this channel, we provide you with videos of unique sounding and looking percussive instruments, from sound examples to musical performances, interviews, and music production tutorials. So, if you're new here and a drum nerd just like us, please consider subscribing and liking the video so we can get the custom drum word out. We as Red Pack Drums are focused on getting you custom built drums to your desktop computer. This way you can play with exclusive, expensive drum sounds that wouldn't be available without uh, selling your kidney. So if you guys have any suggestions of expensive drums that you would love to have sampled, please leave it in the comment section. We will definitely consider adding these to our roster. Today we're doing another Rat Pack Hacks video and it's all about EQ, how to EQ your drum recordings. And for this example, I'm using our drum library, but this works for every recording, for every drum library, whatever. These are my steps, my philosophy on how to go about doing this. So in this video, I will explain exactly my steps of approaching drum recording and EQing the microphones recorded. So before we start, the first thing I want to say is, so EQing your drums heavily depends on which genre of music you're working on, right? So that's why it's really important to always listen in your track. So that brings us to tip number one, which is one of the most important ones always listen in context of the music of course you can solo a snare drum or you want to pinpoint the frequency you want to take out or boost a bit you can solo it but always listen in context in the music it's just plain ass stupid to eq your whole drums and then adding the other instruments all the sounds need to come out two speakers and these are in front of you so let them play all the frequencies in the music and cut and boost where needed if you are if you're adding more frequency later then the whole balance is screwed up right that's not the way to do it listen in context tip number one tip number two very important one as well try to not eq at all EQ always introduces phase shifting artifacts you probably don't want. Typical uh, drum uh, recordings always come with multiple mics. So you have closed mics, you have overheads, you have maybe some different uh, compressed mics that you can use. Uh, and they all have their own sound and they have their own balance in low end, mid range and high end. So try to first balance the microphones you have and add and subtract microphones for the sound you need if that makes any sense to you at all at this point so tip number three is start with fewer microphones mute everything and just add for example the closed mics if you need a closed mic sound these have typically more low end uh, then then overheads and rooms uh, overhead and rooms ha have more high end to them because they're further away of the drums start with the uh, closed mics for example or just with the overheads and slowly add microphones if you need more low end you 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 add the closed mics if you need a more of a room sound and then go for the room microphones so again if you have multiple microphones uh, used for the recording the close mics due to proximity effect of microphones give you more low end so the more further away uh, the microphones are they will have less low end so the balance will be more to the high end right so always keep this in mind if you're looking for low end add the close mics if you need high end add overheads and room mics and microphones that were further away from the drums so let's jump in a session and I'll show you and let you hear the difference of microphones. <laughs> so here you can see all the different recorded microphones. Uh, these are the, the master faders. 
let's call them the master faders. Closed mics, so these have more low end. And beef microphones, it's in the name, gives you more beef, so more low end. These are recorded with a sub microphone close by the instrument. So overhead, rooms, character and squash microphones are further away from the drums, so they give you more high end and they all have their own character a bit. So yeah, you can listen to them uh, if you solo it. So let's just give him a quick listen soloed. So you have a, a, a bit of a feel what that does. Let's just take a snare mic. This is the closed mic soloed. Let's take uh, the overheads, for example. Yeah, a lot more high end. Less um, a low end. So without, let's kill this EQ as well. So without even touching e an EQ, I can balance these two microphones, uh, the close one soloed and the overhead soloed. And listen to it. Okay, I want a little bit more low end. And I'm so I'm pushing the close mic. Or killing the, the overhead microphone, reducing it. So the balance is skewed to the low end. And that works for every microphone. Uh, we have the beep. Let's add that one. So that will give you more, even more low end. And this is without touching the EQ. Let's see if this is on. It's not doing anything. So now I'm soloing, soloing it to make a point but normally you just listen to it in the context of the track and then you'll be adding the microphones without any EQ. So it's obvious when you have more experience in recognizing frequencies, you'll be much faster in getting the right sound that you want and the right fr uh, frequencies you need. But to make it a bit easier, just think about it as your car stereo frequencies, uh, your car stereo EQ. It like a three band EQ. You have lows, one fader for the lows, one fader for the mids, and one fader for the highs. If you just think about it in the in this context, then it's much easier to understand where you need to go. Low, bop, 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 everybody knows low and everybody knows high. <laughs> And you have the middle part of it. It's that easy. Of course, you have EQs that can make unlimited bands, and but that's just crazy if you recorded a good drum sound. So don't overthink this. So I put on my headphones uh, so we don't have any microphone spill on this bad boy here. Then the sound is much cleaner. So just just focus on the snare drum. Listen in context of the of the song and think does this need more low end or less low end? Does this need more high end or less low high end? And does it need more mid-range or less mid-range? That's just where your mind should go. So in this context, I feel like it has not enough low end. So we go to the beef microphone and see if we can boost that. Okay, that comes close. We still need a bit more. So then we go for the EQ. I'll get the snare mic. The top one, we've got a bottom one and the top one. And 
we open the EQ. Engage this bad boy. And so with this with these diamond shaped balls, you can choose the frequency. So this is a four band EQ. So low, mid, these both see as see it as, as the mid ones and high. And you can change the 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 bell curve to a shelf. If you don't know what a shelf is, I will show you now. So to visualize, and I'm loading in an instant of Fab Filter because it's really easy to see. So this is a shelf, and this is a bell curve, and you can change that in the drum library by pressing this button. So that's or the bell or a shelf. So this will boost everything from the frequency range you set it to and a bell curve will just yeah, gradually slope down uh, but you, you're boosting 80 hertz here, nothing at the sub uh, levels, right? And that's for the same at the high end. While I have Fab Filter EQ open here, I can explain a bit about the EQ. Uh, the Q and the Q is the width of how of the frequency affected. So you can see here in the fab filter the Q and you when I put it up it becomes narrower and when I put it down it gets really broad. So you will be boosting a lot more frequencies higher than the selected frequency and lower than the uh, selected frequency if you put it the EQ, the Q down you can see I'm boosting all this shit and if you don't need that shit you just want to go narrower then boost the Q up this is narrow this is broad okay what I like to do is start with a narrow Q. Then find the frequency I need. Or with this one, or with this one. So, for example, a lot of snares like a 200 boost. So I go put it to 200, boost the shit out of it so I can hear it really obvious. Don't do like... Uh, 2 dB and think uh, did anything change no, just boost it a lot listen to the frequency you need and then tame it back to 2 or 3 dB max don't go all in with EQ if you're not sure what you're doing <laughs> so let's listen to it So I like this frequency, for example, in this mix. Then I just take down the gain and I re rebroaden. Is that even a word? I then rebroaden the Q. And listen in context again. That sounds good to me and natural. So essentially, that's it. Don't overthink it. See it and as three bands. So you have two mid-range bands 
in this EQ, so you have a little bit more freedom, but you can use one if you like. You don't even have to use this one, but you can if you need it. Don't overuse it. Don't use frequencies that somebody told you to because every source sound is different. L use your ears. That's a, a bit of a cliche in this, in, in this business, but it's true. Just listen what you think sounds good and boost or cut that. So every sound source is different and need to be addressed separately. There is no one way to do it. Otherwise, all the sounds would be the same and it would be boring as hell, right? That's why you still need mixes like me to help you mix your music. Otherwise, you don't have a preset for every sound source that just doesn't exist. And you need different drum sounds just to make it exciting, right? So that's it for me. I hope that helped somebody. If you have any questions, please leave it uh, down in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Jonathan out Red Pack Drums. <laughs>